We've all had nasty neighbors, but an entire town? Think how annoyed you get when just one person honks at you. Now imagine all your neighbors driving by sitting on that horn 24 seven. Are they tormenting one family or did that family wear out its welcome? We want you to decide. This all started in 2007 over a simple real estate deal, correct? Right. It was the property next next door here. Meet Rick and Cindy Curlich, longtime Hubbard residents. They say all they wanted was to buy the property next door. The only problem, it wasn't for sale. These folks, John and Marlene Clementi, had inherited half the house. The other half was tied up in court, but Rick Curlich tried to buy it anyway, even though it had been in the Clementi family for generations. I says, well, you're not getting my land. And I said, that's not right. It's my family since 1922. How could you do that? The Clement family called me up and they told me to take my bid off the table. And if I didn't take my bid off the table, we'd be bitter enemies for life. Rick never got the house, but he says he's still paying for what he did. As the town fire chief, Clementi had lots of friends. And as the town fire chief, Clementi had lots of friends. And as the town fire chief, Clementi had lots of friends. And suddenly, Rick and Cindy say it seemed like every single one of them was driving by honking the horn and it wasn't to say hello. The Clement family conspired together to organize a horn blowing campaign against us. That's really what this is all about. Ask not for whom the horn blows, it no blows for Rick and Cindy Curlidge. In the beginning, it was a hundred times a day. A hundred times a, a day. hundred. Just watch what happened. The last camera is down here on the tree. Okay. Oh, somebody just honked their horn. Did you hear that? Yeah, it's never Was that ended. a friendly honk? Probably not. Okay. Rick says his ear is now well, finely attuned. You can tell an import horn from a domestic horn. Who are these horn blowers? Not just people in the town, but people who work for the town. Firefighters, including some from the department John Clemente ran, and police. Here's one of Hubbard Township's finest, not serving, not protecting, just honking. It's enough to wake the dead. This hearse caught 10 times. And would you look at this? The horn on the bus goes, an education for Hubbard's next generation of horn blowers. Rick and Cindy renamed their dining room the Evidence Room. So when did people start blowing the horns? Were you recruiting people, no, telling no, them no, to no, get this nobody. guy out of town? No. That's what he tells everybody. John says he can explain everything. His son's girlfriend and some of her friends would occasionally blow the horn, but he says that was just their way of saying goodbye. Horn, but he says that was just their way of saying goodbye. Horn, but he says that was just their way of saying goodbye. When they would leave the house, the girls would toot the horn mm -hmm. just to let them know they're leaving. A little toot? Yeah, Rick says, like this car leaving the Clementi's driveway at four in the morning. Does the city of Hubbard have a horn blowing epidemic? An epidemic? No. Uh, we do have a problem in one particular area. We patrolled around town with the police chief, Jim Tafe. At some point, people began blowing horns, but it became clear at, at another point that on occasion it was used to uh, harass uh, the person who lived there. He got orders of protection against more than a dozen people. Curlich versus everybody. It seems like the town of Hubbard is against the Curliches and everybody's in on it now. Why wouldn't you be against them? If you beep your horn one time, he'll take you to court. Just a regular beep. Does the city of Hubbard want the Curliches to leave? I believe so. Do you think you've made matters worse? We don't know how else to stop. 